everyone. Today, we're talking to the plumbers. And we're gonna be talking about something that's on your tradesman and journeyman plumbing test in the state of Texas. So, if you're an apprentice in the state of Texas and you're about to take your license, you need to tune into this. We're gonna be talking about the 45 degree offset. But first, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you like this, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in the future. Now, let's talk about the 45 degree offset. The 45 degree offset is something that you have to do on your plumbing test. Now, what is a 45 degree offset? Well, the definition of an offset is like bringing one pipe out of parallel with another and then back into parallel with another. That's a very abbreviated definition that's in your plumbing code, but that's what we're trying to do. We're gonna see how to measure and figure out what the length of pipe is between one pipe here and one pipe here on a 45 degree angle. We need to figure out what this pipe is that we have to cut. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you do it, plus exactly how it looks down where you take your test in Austin or Waco. So, the 45 degree offset. First of all, it's gonna be set up between two studs. Now this is almost actual size, 16 inch centers on studs. We have a three quarter pipe here and a three quarter pipe here. And what you're doing on your plumbing test is a three quarter inch black iron pipe. What we're wanting to find is this pipe right here. We wanna know what is the measurement of this pipe right here. That's a 45 degree angle. Now, as you can see in the pictures, this is what it looks like down in Austin or Waco. You've got a stud wall, two pipes. Now, I've done the pictures in several stages here. One of them shows the pipes actually just like we have them on the drawing here. Another one shows the pipes side by side so that one's down here and one's right at the same level. That's the way they've got them set now in Austin. They're making it as easy as they can for you guys. So pay attention and you won't have any problem with this. Lastly, I put a tape measure up here in this picture so you can actually see what it is. Cause what we're looking for doing a 45 degree offset is from the center of this pipe to the center of this pipe, just like that. What does that look like to you? A right triangle, right? We've got a right triangle right there. How many of you loved geometry in high school? Now, I say that all the time to the guys in my class. And most of them said, oh, I liked geometry. Well, most of us hated geometry less than we hated algebra, right? Because I don't know that there's that many people that love math. But I know you're out there. But regardless, if you love geometry in high school, then put your thinking cap on. We're using right triangles here. That's all this boils down to. And if you remember geometry, you'll remember some things we're about to talk about. So in a right triangle, there's certain math that we use. So over here, let's draw a right triangle. We've got a right triangle. It's not a very good one, but it's a right triangle. This is 90 degrees, this is 45, and this is 45. We call this a 45 degree right triangle. That means this length is the same as this, as you can see on here. This is called the leg of the triangle, right? The leg and the leg. And what did we call this back in the day? That was called the hypotenuse. So we've got the leg of the triangle, the leg of the triangle, and the hypotenuse of the triangle. Leg, leg, hypotenuse, all right? Now, on a 45 degree triangle in geometry, this leg is the same as this. So if this is, let's just say, if this is one foot, then this is one foot, okay? Now, how do we find the hypotenuse of a triangle? Well, the theory is this is one, this is one, this is the square root of two. Now the formula for doing a 45 degree offset is 1.414 times this dimension right here. So let's say this is 10 inches, as we measured over here before, from the center of this pipe to the center of this pipe. So it'd be 1.414 times 10 inches. All right, where did we get 1.414? One thing about it, guys, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm big about knowing the why behind everything because I feel like if you know the why behind it, 
you're going to remember it better. If you know how we got to where we're going, you're going to remember it better. So why do we use 1.414? Let's go back to that geometry. The leg is one, this is one, the square root of two. Those of you that have calculators, hit the square root of two. You know what the square root of two is? 1.414. Wow. Look at there, now we're doing geometry. Plumbing is geometry. You never realized that you had to be a mathematician to be a plumber, did you? Well, this is what we do. We take 1.414, which is the square root of two. If you multiply this by the leg of a triangle, then it gives you whatever this dimension is. If this is 10 down here, 1.414 times 10 is what this dimension is. 1.414 times 10 is equals 14.14. So that's 14.14 inches. We said this was 10 inches. You saw on the tape measure when I held it on the, on the wall that it was 10 inches between the center to center of the pipes. That was the leg of our triangle, 10 inches. 1.414 times that is 14.44. That means the dimension from here to here is 14.14 inches. Now understand, yes, it's 14.14 inches, but that's from center of pipe to center of pipe. What have we got that we need to think about here? We're not going to be from center of pipe to center of pipe, are we? We're going to be from fitting to fitting, 45. We're actually going to have a 45 degree fitting there, right? So, we're no longer measuring center to the pipe. We need to know to make up of the 45. So, we've got 14.14. So our formula is now equals 14.14 minus our fittings. And I say fittings, why? Because we have two 45s, one here and one here. We subtract our fittings from the 14.14 and that gives us the length of our cut. Critical thing there. A lot of guys, they're so nervous at their test, they do the math, they do an awesome job, they find this 14.14, and what do they do? They forget to subtract the fittings. Don't get that anxious. Don't forget to subtract your fittings. You subtract your fittings. Well, we're talking about 3 quarter inch 45s. Well, there's a cool little trick about black iron pipe. With black iron fittings, and this falls uh, in the line for black iron threaded pipe, brass threaded fittings, stainless steel threaded fittings on most of them, galvanized threaded fittings. The takeoff from center to makeup, and when we're talking about that, we're talking about from this point to where it makes up, how far the threads are going to screw in. Center of the fitting right here to makeup, like from the back to makeup, is the same size or the same dimension as the size of the pipe. It's the same dimension as the size of the pipe. So, if we're talking about a 3 quarter 45, then the takeoff from center to makeup is 3 quarters of an inch. Easy, right? There's some tricks about copper that are the same way, but it's not quite the same, it's, but it's close. So now we know the makeup. 3 quarters of an inch is what our fitting takes off. But how many fittings do we have? We have two. So, what do we have to do? Yes, you're right. You have to double it. So two times three quarter is what? One and a half. So right here, our fittings is minus 1.5 inches equals our cut. And that's the piece of pipe that you're going to cut and thread for that. Now on your test in Austin or Waco, you don't have to cut and thread the piece of pipe. All you have to do is do the math and let the instructor know what you come out with. So that's a 45 degree offset, guys. It's pure geometry. The right triangle, the legs of the triangle, times the hypotenuse, which is 1.414. That's where that number comes from, times the leg. In this case, it was 10 inches. And if that's 12 inches or whatever, we're going to plug that in right here. It's going to be 14.14. 1.5 inches to subtract because it's a 3 quarter. If we were doing 1 inch, we would subtract 1 inch times 2. If we were doing half inch, it would be a half inch times two. It's cool kind of that way that those threaded fittings do that, isn't it? But that is a standard among fittings that I've been using for 47 years. One last thing though. Does your tape measure read decimals? So 14.14 minus 
1.5 equals what? Our cut ends up being 12.64 inches. But, oddly enough, I don't see anywhere on this tape measure 12.64. <laughs> We're in fractions now. So, let me give you another little trick. Fractions are what's on our tape. We have to convert that 12.64 inches. Well, let me give you something that you can remember. First of all, always remember, if you divide the top by the bottom, you'll get what your fraction is. So, our fractions that we go to is the nearest eighth inch. Now, I've had guys say, oh, you need to be able to cut to a sixteenth of an inch. Well, most of our sawzall blades and everything else are larger or the same size as a sixteenth of an inch. If you can cut within an eighth of an inch, you're going to be a great plumber. And generally, an eighth of an inch is going to be as close as you ever need. So, we're going to need to know all of our eighths. Well, in one inch, there's eight eighths, right? We need to know one eighth. We need to know one quarter. We need to know three eighths. We need to know one half. We need to know five eighths, three quarter, and seven eighths. Because that's the dimensions that we're going to be breaking down our cut into. Now the way we find this is, you divide the numerator by the denominator, and that gives you your decimal equivalent. So 1 divided by 8 equals 0.125. Okay? Now we've got the 8, but let's do this simple. What's a quarter? Most of you know what a quarter percent is. That, 0.25. What about a half? 0.50, right? Three quarter? 0.75. All right, look, we're over halfway there. Now, to get these others, Divide the numerator by the denominator. That means divide the top by the bottom. Divide 3 by 8, which equals 0.375. 5 divided by 8 is 0.625. And 7 divided by 8 is 0.875. Now, we've got all our decimal equivalents of 1 eighth through 7 eighths. What do we do? We've got... 6.4 inches there, 0.64. What is it the closest to? Again, we're just trying to get as close as we can to an eighth inch. So you realize if you're rounding up or down, you're not adjusting very much. The closest thing to 0.64 is 0.625. So our cut would be 12 and 5 eighths of an inch. Simple, right? Now you can remember this. You can snap a picture of this on the screen. You can just remember always, too, that all you need to do is divide the top number by the bottom number, the numerator by the denominator, and it's going to give you your decimal equivalent. All you need to do is round to whatever's closest. If it's right smack dab in the middle, it won't matter which way you go because you're only going to be a sixteenth to an eighth inch off. And if you're that close, you're in good shape. Remember, a tape measure is not measured in decimals. You have to convert it back to fractions, eighths of an inch. And that's what you need to make sure and put down as your answer on the test. And remember, don't forget to subtract your fittings. It's the biggest mistake guys make. They get all the math done right and everything, and they think they're done, and they forget to subtract their fittings. And make sure and subtract two fittings. You've got a 45 and a 45. You have to take the fittings off, center to makeup. Iron pipe sizes, center to makeup, always equals the size of the pipe. Okay? It's simple. It's geometry, and now you're doing math again. You thought you'd never use that stuff you had to learn in high school, right? Well, now you're using it, and it's making you money. So, let's go get that tradesman license. That's how you do a 45-degree offset, and why you use 1.414 as the multiplier. I love teaching the tradesman test. I love teaching guys how to do the offsets. Now, I will tell you this. Are you going to use this 45-degree offset very often? No, but when you need it, you need it. If you're in commercial work, you're going to do it a lot more often and you're going to need it a lot. If you're in residential service, not so much, but there may come a day that you need it. You also use this same information if you're having to lay out ditches on the ground and lay out a 45 degree offset in your pipe. So it works the same. You're still using that right triangle and figuring those 45 degree offsets. Hope you've learned a lot from this video. I hope you're closer to passing that tradesman or journeyman test. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Make sure and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you passed that test.
Don't forget, tell your friends, the butler did it.